Screw you guys. I'm going home. Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube series on how to create a living room, home theater, and gaming console PC. This is an update to episode 1, since episode 1 was basically just me talking into an iPhone for 20 minutes. So the footage that I'm showing here I recorded earlier this morning, and you can see right now that I've booted up the console and it's sitting at the Kodi start screen. So we're going to do a random overview of the features here. Uh, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do here is take a look at the recently added TV shows in the system. So we're just going to go ahead and pick a show here at random. You can see from the user interface there that uh, it really looks and acts just like any other DVR system that you'd get from a cable provider. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close that. Next up, we're going to go ahead and go over to the movies, and we're going to take a look at the most recently added movies. And we're going to go ahead and pick a random movie here to start, and uh, as you can see, you know, everything is seamless and effortless. You know, so while you're in Kodi, you should be using a Microsoft remote control. Uh, so that the user experience is just like anything you'd get from any other consumer electronics device. Um, so next up we're going to go ahead and uh, go to music. And we're going to go ahead and look through the recently added albums. And we're going to pick something at random to play real quick. So we've, uh, we've selected a song to play, and we see that we get the nice uh, Winamp visualizations in the background. Very nice uh, configuration here for sure. Alright, so next up we're going to go look at some video add-ons. Add-ons are a great way to add new functionality into Kodi through extensions that people engineer themselves or get from a repository. So here we're just going to show, uh, we're going to go to the YouTube extension. And we see here that uh, I'm going to click my subscriptions and it should pull up all the newly published episodes from all the uh, channels that I subscribe to on YouTube. So here we're just going to pick something uh, to play randomly. It looks like uh, we've picked a Gaming Bolts review of a new game called In The Side. And we can see it My looks great. Was uh, camera running towards something. The game was Super Mario Bros. 3 and I was running through levels over Goombas under Piranha Plants, sprouting from pipes, shooting for the flag, trying to save Princess Peach. We've been running towards something for almost as long as there have been video games. Be it the flag at the end of the level, a star, a puzzle piece. So I was trying to show you there the uh, that this is all being controlled with a remote control and a or an Xbox controller, whichever you prefer. So here we're gonna go ahead and launch Steam, and we see that uh, once we've launched Steam from Kodi, that uh, we're booted into this big picture mode, which if you have a Steam box, you're very familiar with at this point, because this is the user interface for that. Um, and here we could launch our games and play our games if we wanted to do that, but uh, we don't we don't use Steam for that. We pretty much just use Steam to watch game review, you know game trailers and to purchase new games. We don't use it to play games. So we go ahead and exit out of this and uh, start looking at some game stuff. So here we're gonna go ahead and uh, launch the big box front end. Okay, so once we're inside Big Box, we're just going to pick GameCube as the system we want to play. Uh, and in this case, we're going to load up a random GameCube game. Uh, this one being The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. 
we can see that uh, you know big box handled the loading of the emulator and all that good stuff for us we didn't have to do anything to make that work uh, and as you can see here the you know the game looks just like the game would look if you were running it on a GameCube it really is indistinguishable from what you would expect to get from a console running the game natively Alright, so here we're going to jump out of the GameCube games and we're going to go down to Microsoft Windows PC games. We're the children of Skyrim and, we've and you can see here that uh, the big box interface, uh, the layout that I'm using here um, is one of the newer ones. It, place video snaps for you so you can cycle through the games and watch videos of the game uh, to decide if you want to play them or not it's a really fantastic feature of this particular front end So next up, yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, actually load up Fallout 4. We'll get that going here for a minute or so, so you can take a look at just how good the system really is. Uh, it's It really is a no compromises machine. It, it'll play anything you want to play, and it'll play it really, really well. Okay, so the game is started now. I think we're going to actually get it going and run around a little bit just to prove uh, how good the machine runs uh, real modern intensive games. Okay, so we are loaded and uh, I think I've got this game set to a 60 frames per second cap um, and I don't think it ever drops below 60 um, and this is even with an EMB and, and lots of mods for this particular game so we're gonna run around here just for a minute All right, so we're going to go ahead and close this out. All right, so next up, I think we're going to go to PlayStation 2. And we're going to go ahead and pick a game here, Final Fantasy XII. And you can see that just like was the case with the Nintendo GameCube, the PS2 emulator runs really well. And the games themselves are really no different from the games running natively on their console systems.
Okay, so you can see here, you know, that it ran just like a PS2 would run. It looks really good. So we're going to go ahead and uh, close... We're going to go ahead and close this. And then we see when we leave Big Box, we're going to go ahead and uh, be back at the Cody Launcher interface. So that pretty much covers, you know, how the console works and what you should expect to get out of it. Um, so next up, we'll uh, return back to the series as usual, and we're going to focus on how exactly you get Cody configured to look like it looks for me and uh, get it to function the way that you're seeing it here on screen. Uh, nothing too complicated. It's actually fairly easy to, to get all set up, uh, but we'll cover that stuff next time. Hope you enjoyed the video.